All right, kiddos, we're back and we're ready to go. We're going to be talking today a little bit more about chapter two. So we had finished um, the, the chapter that was talking about how energy, or the portion of the chapter, that was talking about how energy moves through through the ecosystems. Um, and we had said that basically the ultimate source of energy was what? Yes, the sunlight. And we had said we do have some, some communities that have other sources of energy, but in terms of the, the earth and the vast majority of life on earth, it's sunlight, it's sunlight. You know, geothermal hydro vent communities be kind of hard for you and I to get to them when they're at 30,000 feet deep in the ocean. Um, so, so the ultimate source of energy in the universe was the sun, and then we had said, how on earth is that sunlight converted into, into energy that you and I can, can eat? And we had said, oh, well, that's plants. And they, they have this process we called photosynthesis. Now, what did we say it is? We had said, with sunlight energy, they're able to take water, and CO2 from the air and use that sunlight energy to build carbohydrates. And what did we say carbohydrates are made of? Carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. So the CO2 from the environment is combined with water and it's used to make large biomolecules such as carbohydrates. And so we'd said that's how we capture this energy. But even if you are a plant, in order to extract the energy from those carbohydrates, you have to use the other process. What is that? It's related to breathing. It, it has a funny name, what seems like a funny name, but it is really appropriate. It's called cellular respiration. Sounds like breathing, right? Well, why is that? it's because it requires oxygen. You have to have oxygen for cellular respiration to, to occur. And so what you do is in the presence of oxygen and these complex carbon containing molecules, you are able to break them down into, um, into CO2, water, and energy. Energy that you and I and those plants can use. And what well, I didn't mention the byproduct of photosynthesis, when you take, so to go back to what the plants were doing, when you take that CO2 from the air and combine it with the water, you end up with an oxygen, with extra oxygen. And so the waste product of photosynthesis, um, the throwaway part is oxygen. And then I said, if you are going to break down those biomolecules using cellular respiration, you have to have oxygen. And what is the waste? CO2. And so you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out CO2. And that is why. That's why. So it is completely connected to breathing. And that's why we call it cellular respiration. Okay, so that, that's all review from last time, and it brings us to, um, to where we're talking about ecosystems. And an ecosystem, the, the biggest ecosystem in our world is the biosphere. That's the world and everything in it. But we don't normally talk about it that way. We talk about the Cranberry Township Woodland ecosystem or, you know, something like that. So, and, and with, with this term, you literally can define it however you want. You know, it's a certain area, <clears throat> you can say, and, and it typically has um, a characteristic uh, forms of life. We could say the, um, the wetlands of Cranberry Township, I'm sure there's some somewhere. Um, so it'd be a much smaller area than if we talked about the woodlands of Cranberry Township. These would be two different kinds of ecosystems. Now, within any ecosystem, we're going to have what we call 
populations. And what is a population? A population is all of the individuals of a certain species living in a defined area. So if we said the, the population of deer living in the woodland ecosystems of Cranberry Township, then it would be all of those individual white-tailed deer. Now, we could be talking about mosquitoes in the wetlands of Cranberry. Uh, and that would be all of the individual mosquitoes, little buggers, uh, living in that community. So, so within that ecosystem. So when we talk about a population, it's always definition. All of the individuals of a single species living in a defined area. Now, I inadvertently said the, the next term that we're going to talk about, which is a community. When we talk about the woodlands of the woodland ecosystem of Cranberry Township, it's not just deer, right? You've got a whole lot of stuff. You've got your oak trees. And so you could say the population of oak trees, you know, and there'd be each of those trees. Or you could say um, turkeys, you know, anything. Um, so when we talk about the Cranberry Township woodland ecosystem, it's not just one species. It's not just one population. It is all of the populations living in that defined ecosystem, the woodlands of Cranberry Township. And so there'd be huge numbers. It'd be everything from all of, all of the different um, populations of grasses, bushes, you know, individual kinds of bushes, um, house flies, you know, everything. Um, all of those combined will make up the Cranberry Township Township ecosystem community of life. Okay. So the ecosystem, I keep throwing that word around without defining it. It is all of the populations that make up the community plus the physical environment of this Cranberry Township woodland area. That is what, the, what an ecosystem is. So what did I do? I took the community, all of the life, and I added in the physical structure of the community, of the land. And that's, that's the physical structure of the land. And that makes the ecosystem. It's the community plus the physical, you know, topography, whether it's woods, whether it's hills. I'm sorry, whether it's, you know, wetland, whether it's hilly, whatever. And so ecology, which is sort of the overriding field that we're talking about, ecology is the study of all life and the interactions between the life plus the interactions between the life and the area they're living in, the, um, the ecosystem. So that's what we're, we're talking about ecology right now. All right, so when we talk about <clears throat> what you eat or what the individual species in any given area eats, um, if you think of those deer, uh, this morning we looked out, I live in Pittsburgh, <laughs> we looked out the window where we were eating breakfast and there was a, a big deer in our front yard right by my, the window and there were four others. And what were they doing? They were looking for something to eat and I happened to have a pear tree right there, and I didn't want that to be on the menu, so we chased them out of the front yard. Um, so, so, but my point is, they don't always eat buds off of trees, right? Sometimes they do, but they'll eat um, other stuff, all different kinds of plants and grasses, flowers, vegetables, <laughs> they eat a whole lot of stuff. And so when you start trying to make a, a relationship or to, to describe what they eat, you know, what, so what does a deer eat? 
Well, you could say the bud's off of a tree <clears throat> when it's really cold and snows on the ground. But otherwise, they're probably not eating the, the sticks, right? They're probably eating something much juicier, something much more tasty, like tulips. We try to grow tulips in our yard, forget it. They get that big and then they're back down to the ground. Deer love them. And then what else? Grass and everything else you can think of that's edible, they eat. So you don't talk about a food chain. So a food chain would be, well, if you said, well, deer, deer eat corn. Yeah, sure they do, but they eat a whole lot of other stuff. So a food, a food chain sort of implies a linear relationship the deer, you know, the deer eats the corn, the bear eats the deer, you know, so on. But it's not that simple. It's actually much more complex. Depending on what's available at any given time, all of these different species, whether we're talking about the deer or the bear, they're going to be eating other stuff. And so, so when we look at who eats whom or what, we don't think of it as a food chain. We think of it as a food web. There's a myriad of things that sometimes they're eating over here and sometimes they're eating that and they hate those asparagus, but they love the Brussels sprouts. Um, you know what I'm saying? Everything, it's, it's a very complicated relationship. Um, and so we have different, we have different kinds of feeders, Right. So we had mentioned before that we have um, primary producers are the plants and algae, photosynthetic stuff. And then we have all different kinds of consumers. I'm going to go on and stop here because we're at 12 minutes and we'll come back and we'll talk about consumers. And we'll, we'll be thinking a little bit more about this food web idea.